Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about something called completing the square, which I like to think of as a polynomial manipulation technique. The only thing you need to know going into this video is how to factor a polynomial. I do have videos on this topic if you need a refresher. Let's talk about some motivation. Consider the polynomial x squared plus 2x plus 1, which has a very nice factorization. And when I say nice, I mean that both of its factored terms are the same, so I can write the whole polynomial as x plus 1 squared. This is a very nice property and certainly does not always happen. But it is really nice to write a whole polynomial as the square of a polynomial with a smaller degree. So maybe we can see if there's a way that we can get close to a result like this. For instance, take the polynomial x squared plus 4x plus 1, which does not factor like the polynomial upstairs. So what I'm going to do is put this polynomial through some algebraic manipulation. In other words, I'm going to change the way that this polynomial is written without changing the actual value of the expression. One way to change the way it's written is to add 0. I know that if I add 0 to something, I don't change its value at all. But now I'm going to take it a step further and replace 0 with 4 minus 4. I still haven't changed the value of this polynomial because 4 minus 4 is still equal to 0. Now using the commutative property, I'll move my numbers around a little bit. Observe then that the first three terms of this polynomial, x squared plus 4x plus 4, does factor, and it factors into x plus 2 squared. And then I can add on my leftover term of 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. So this isn't quite the result that I got upstairs, but it's pretty close. I have something that factored into a square of terms and a remainder term, so to speak. So I got what I wanted. I took the polynomial x squared plus 4x plus 1, and I got to write it as the square of a degree 1 polynomial and a subtraction of 3. But at the moment, this 4 minus 4 kind of came out of nowhere. So the question is, how did I come up with this term, and why did it work out so well? Well, that's where completing the square comes in. Completing the square is a technique of taking the polynomial x squared plus bx plus c, and then writing it as the square of a degree 1 polynomial plus or minus some leftover term which will probably be a number. The first step of completing the square is to compute b over 2 squared. In other words, take the coefficient of x, divide it by 2, and then square it, and you'll always end up with a non-negative number. The next step is to add 0, and 0 comes in the form of b over 2 squared minus b over 2 squared. So in the previous slide, b was equal to 4, and then b over 2 squared was also equal to 4. So that's where I got 4 minus 4 in replacement of 0 from. The last step is then just to factor. You can do this by moving the positive b over 2 squared term x to bx, and then you'll factor in the following way. So you'll always end up with a factorization x plus b over 2 quantity squared plus c minus b over 2 squared. This formula might look a little weird at first, but it gets a little bit easier once you deal with actual numbers that simplify. Let's do some examples. Let's complete the square of the polynomial x squared plus 12x plus 1. Identify 12 as our b term, and then compute 12 over 2 squared, which is 6 squared, which is 36. And that's it for step 1. Now take the same polynomial and add and subtract 36 at the same time. Before I factor, I'm going to move the positive 36 closer to x squared plus 12x. And I'll see that I can factor the first three terms because 36 equals to 6 times 6, and 6 plus 6 is equal to 12. So when I factor this, I'll get x plus 6 squared minus 35, which came from 1 minus 36. In our next example, complete the square of the polynomial x squared minus 3x plus 2. We'll end up computing 9 over 4, so we'll add and subtract 9 over 4 to our polynomial, like so. I'll move positive 9 over 4 next to minus 3x, and then I can observe that 9 over 4 is equal to 3 over 2 times 3 over 2, and minus 3 is equal to negative 3 minus 3 halves. Moving forward, I can factor the first three terms into x minus 3 halves squared, where my leftover term will be minus 1 fourth, and we're done. Now let's talk about completing the square in a broader setting, with the polynomial ax squared plus bx plus c, where a might not be equal to 1. For our first step, we can factor out a from the first two terms of the polynomial to get a times x squared plus b over ax quantity plus c. I'm doing this because then I can complete the square of x squared plus b over a times x. 
which is the exact same process as what we've done so far. It might look worse because there are fractions involved here, but I promise the process is the exact same thing. The reason we're seeing b over 2a squared is because b over a divided by 2 is equal to b over 2a. The last step is to replace the completed square with what we have above and then simplify. Even though we do have a sort of general formula for what this looks like, this isn't something you should try to memorize. This is merely justification that it can be done, but I promise the numbers get easier once you do a concrete example. So let's complete the square of 2x squared plus 8x plus 1. We'll identify 2 as our a term and then factor out 2 from the first two terms of this polynomial, namely 2x squared and 8x. Once I do this, I'm left with 2 times the quantity x squared plus 4x plus 1. Now I can complete the square of the quantity on the inside. Following through the steps, I see that x squared plus 4x equals x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 4, since 4 over 2 squared is equal to 4. Then I can factor and find that x squared plus 4x is equal to x plus 2 squared minus 4. After a simple substitution, I get the revised expression 2 times the quantity x plus 2 squared minus 4 plus 1. Running through some simplification, I get 2 times x plus 2 squared minus 8 plus 1, which simplifies again to 2 times x plus 2 squared minus 7. And we're finished. Let's do one more example. Complete the square of the polynomial 4x squared plus 8x minus 9. I'll identify 4 as a, and I'll factor it out from 4x squared and 8x, leaving behind x squared plus 2x. Now I will complete the square on x squared plus 2x, which when I run through the steps, give me x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 1, which lands me at x plus 1 squared minus 1. After I make this substitution, I can simplify the statement 4 times x plus 2 squared minus 1 minus 9 down to 4 times x plus 1 squared minus 4 minus 9, giving me a final answer of 4 times x plus 1 squared minus 13.